This is the G Podcast with your host, Tommy B. Hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome to episode 208 of This is the G Podcast. Yes, yes, yes. You know it. I'm Tommy B. Welcome to our second taping of 2024, man. Happy King Holiday weekend to you. Each week, man, you know what we do. We do news, politics, pop culture, that piping hot tea from the one and only Tanya B. Vi and Tlaib are back with me this week, and we're going to talk about the continuing beefs, man. Cat Williams last week, now Stephen A. Smith this week, and we'll get into some politics as well. Tanya B. has your tea. So let's go ahead and kick it off with Syracuse Mike and all that good news. Mike, what you got, man? News team, assemble! It's time for the Week in News with Syracuse Mike. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin said he takes full responsibility for the secrecy surrounding an ongoing hospitalization for reasons we still don't know. Austin, who is 70, was admitted on New Year's Day to Walter Reed National Military Medical Center. Not even the president was aware of Austin's hospitalization until three days later. The two had what the White House called a cordial conversation on Saturday evening. In sports, the Falcons have made it official. Head coach Arthur Smith is out. Team CEO Rich McKay. We need to always hold ourselves accountable to our fans, and we need to try to put ourselves in a position to compete for championships, and, and that's that's why we made this decision at this time. Team owner Arthur Blank says there is no timetable for naming Smith's replacement. Fulton County DA Fonnie Willis finds herself in the middle of allegations that she had an improper relationship with a prosecutor. According to a new court filing by one of Donald Trump's co-defendants, Willis hired someone she was personally involved with to lead the prosecution of Trump and 18 others in the Georgia election case. The allegations also state that she financially benefited from that alleged romantic relationship with special prosecutor Nathan Wade. The attorney from Michael Roman is seeking to have the charges against him dismissed. The DA's office said a response to the allegations will be made in a court filing. A federal appeals court in Washington is indicating it will reject Donald Trump's arguments that he cannot be criminally prosecuted for his efforts to overturn the 2020 election. His attorney argued that the former president enjoyed absolute immunity from prosecution for what he did while in office. We're learning more about the hospitalization of Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin. He is being treated for complications following prostate surgery. The surgery results in a severe infection. The White House was unaware of Austin's health issues for days, and with the White House now calling for notification procedure changes when a cabinet member is ill, Air Force Major General Pat Ryder told reporters Tuesday, We want to make sure that if there is a transfer of authority, making sure that the appropriate senior leaders in the chain of command know. Also, the Pentagon says the cancer was caught early, and Austin's prognosis is excellent. Former President Donald Trump clashed with the judge during closing arguments in court Thursday. The judge cut him off and at one point told Trump's attorney to control his client. This is the civil fraud trial, which could stop him from doing business in New York. Outside of the courtroom, Trump accused the attorney general, Letitia James, of trying to prevent him from being reelected. She says that's not her focus. This case has never been about politics or personal vendetta or about name calling. This case is about the facts and the law. And Mr. Donald Trump violated the law. Y'all give it up for the newsmaker crew in the building. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Tlaib. Tlaib Shabazz is in the building. Tlaib, how you doing, man? Man, I'm fantastic, brother. Happy New Year to y'all. You know, we've had a, 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 you know, 2023 We had a spectacular closeout for that year. So I'm looking forward to a a positive and lucrative 2024. Let's say. Oh, wow. Well, good. Because on that note, I got something to ask you in a few. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Y'all give it up for the country commentator in the building, one and only Kirby Jr., Kirby Smart Jr. (laughs) Vies in the building. I gotta stop he this just, Kirby Jr. <laughs> he just won't let it go though, y'all. He, UGA he just won't let it go. <laughs> oh man. You know what I'm talking about. I'm not I gonna do. get into it. I we'll do. wait. I do. I do. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and jump it right into it, man. Last week uh we discussed Cat Williams uh on Club Shay Shay and and now I think then, back then last week it was around eighteen million. Now it's around forty six to forty eight million. Good grief. Um yeah, it, it, it's it's going to be well over fifty million. 
Um, this week, uh, we had another epic battle <laughs> between two sports commentators, you know, Jason Whitlock uh, on Fox and Stephen A. Smith, you know, first take fame on ESPN on his podcast. Um, you know, Whitlock got called out for really uh, calling out Stephen A. Smith on his memoir, which uh, the memoir is now in paperback. So, you know, they, they, they're starting to re- promote it in paperback. And Whitlock is questioning some of the details, saying he didn't wrote, write it and some of the facts. Yeah, it was just messy. Uh, and and Stephen A. Man unleashed the Kraken. Would you say, Vi, on, on, oh, yeah. um, he did. on he went, Whitlock? He My went on. He, 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 he went September 11 on him. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> he, I'm talking about 40 minutes. He just went off almost he an hour. Went off. And you know it's King Holiday Weekend, y'all. And, and you know King Holiday Weekend, twenty twenty. You're right. He should have waited after that. <laughs> so it's King <laughs> Week. <laughs> and you know, considering what we're facing, you know, a couple of things. You know, even even when you look at the fact that some of these states are pulling, you know, the summer, uh, you know, lunches from kids and public schools, all this stuff going on, man. When we're considering all this stuff. You know, are these beefs just overdone and, and kind of distractions? I want to get your thoughts on that. And uh, just real quick story, and then we'll go into your feedback. You know, I love getting feedback, positive or negative, on the show. And, and one of our, our diehard listeners said, we didn't go in enough on Cat. I'm sorry, didn't go in enough for Cat, you know, in his in his commentary. And, and one of the things, you know, the way I sum it up, and Talib, you might be able to sum it up the same way for hip hop. In a lot of cases, and by you're more of a fan, so you're kind of in the middle. You're, you're right. You know. I'm more of a fan, definitely. Yeah, but we know when when Tanya B went and I were talking about you know Cat and some of these other comedians, we've known some of these guys. I mean, we've dealt with them, you know. So when you deal with them, it's hard to go in a hundred percent because some of this shit is like, damn, wait a minute, I know him, and I know, you know, it's it's like. You know, like with you to leave on the hip hop side, when there are beefs and you know both parties, you know what I'm saying? And one party says something and and, and you know both parties and you know, wait a minute. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and your thoughts to leave on the hip hop side, because you know, oh. there's some legendary beefs on the hip hop yeah, side. Yeah, definitely, definitely <laughs> legendary beefs. You know, I think that, um, you know, what I used to say is that hip hop is a Highlander sport. And if you ever watch the TV show, the Highlander, you know, at the end of the show, they would duke it out and, you know, one would be killed or unalived, I guess. And then, um, the Highlander who was left would take their power and keep it moving. So, you know, the, the spirit of battle in hip hop has always been like, I'm the best and I'm trying to take anybody out who says any different. And if we get together after we battle, then we can become cool or not cool. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm always down with beef as long as it stays in its place. You know what I mean? I'm not down with violence, but I'm okay with you not liking somebody. It's just a part of life. You know what I mean? We can't help that. Um, But my thing is, you know, like what we're seeing right now with these people in particular is that it's, it's the, it's the chin check. You know what I mean? It's the 2024 chin check, and we're seeing that happening. There's chin checks happening all over the place with Diddy, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, with Jason Whitlock and Stephen A. Smith, with Cat Williams and the people he addressed in, in his diatribe. So, you know, it's I'm cool with it as long as it's like, okay, well, I got called on it, that was my bad, or, you know... I don't agree, and we're going to keep it moving. As long as it doesn't elevate past this war of words that we're having, I'm I'm cool with it, you know? Because it's really, at the end of the day, it's, for the most part, it's none of my business. The yeah. problems that these people are having with each other has nothing to do with me, you yeah. know? Or, or I could not get in the middle of that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I have no place, so... As far as I'm concerned, you know, y'all work it out. And then it doesn't go to the streets. 
And they're not real problems, to be honest with you. I mean, can we, can we actually relate to it? <laughs> yes. Yeah. People can we relate to this? Yeah. People, I mean, come on, you know. See, you know, I will say this, though. Um, what I was um, what I was noticing in this 50th anniversary of hip hop is that there are a lot of people who weren't necessarily on the scene doing things actively part of that community but now they're trying to insert themselves mm -hmm, as mm -hmm. they were as if they were part of what was happening at that time and you know this revisionist history you know has you know been taking place for many years you know I think what it is is that I'm really starting to recognize it now yeah, and I'm yeah. seeing it in a multitude of places you know with with the Florida laws about uh, you know not wanting to put slavery or in, in its proper context you know yeah. what I mean yeah Come on, you know, we can see a lot of things happening. And it's a, you know, I'm thinking that really it's the day of the reckoning. We have a lot of people that are being reckoned with. And if the Kraken is being released on these folks, then really it probably needs to. Yeah, because I didn't really, I didn't know who Jason Whitlock was, honestly. Oh, he's you know? a horrible person. And I was like, you know, who, why is, when you were talking about it, I'm like, why is Stephen A beefing with this dude in the first place? He's a horrible person. Oh my gosh. Then, then I, when I recognized <laughs> <laughs> where I do know him from, you know, He's which is his person. infamous, with uh, the infamous, you know, it's the, oh. we have the mothers to blame for what's going on with the chill, you know, with the police brutality and all this other stuff. I'm like, what the? Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. He needs, he needs a couple of cracking released on his ass, yo. You, you know, know. Steve, Stephen A. Smith went on for like 40 minutes and, and he said he's the worst, most despicable, lying, no good, <laughs> fat ass human being he's ever known. He called him the B word. He's a male a can his own. A piece of crap. Well, he didn't use crap, but I'm going to use it just to start mm. off the year, y'all. I'm going right. to be good. Right. Uh, he also said Whitlock was one of the worst white supremacists. You yeah, know, because he black. And yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, <laughs> and so uh, that goes to what you were saying, Talib. You know, definitely. Uh, you know, so so my, my my point is, and and you know, one more thing about the comedy, and I do want to get your thoughts about whether or not these beefs. And, you know, I, I get it. I, I think you're saying as long as it remains entertaining, it's cool, right? You know, but but one of the, one of the things um, you got to keep in mind, man, the the comedy world has gone through COVID. Mm -hmm. A lot of these guys who depend 100% on stand up took a they major hurt. hit. They, took yeah, they got hurt. Yes. You know, especially some of the some of the names we know who you don't understand that week to week, month to month, year to year, that's how they make their money. Mm -hmm. Had to take off for a few years, but you had other comedians who basically had Netflix deals, who you know, right. had movie deals, had TV right. deals. They didn't they didn't get hit, you right. know. So, That's hard. Yeah. yeah. So I think there may be some, what do you call it? Some pent up <laughs> anger, you know, after watching these guys kind of cruise through COVID, come out fine. And somebody, a lot of them didn't come out as well, you know, yeah, right. especially the whole Mark Curry thing and, and, and a few other comedians that have, you know, you know, come out, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and, and spoken out on you know, against comedians who are much larger or, or have a, a bigger reach, you know? Right. So, um, you know, I, I'm just looking at it and, and I want to you know, get I, I hear you to leave. I want to get Vi's thoughts, man. I'm just looking at it from a standpoint. We got so much to deal with 2024. I agree with you to leave as long as we keep it entertaining, because I do think it's entertaining. You know, people right. see, you know, it, it, it hasn't gotten to a point where it's so freaking personal. Mm -hmm. um, that it's like, damn, we don't need to hear this. Right. It ain't hurt. Right. Plus, it hasn't hurt anybody's pocket yet. Neither. Well, it's going to help. It, it definitely is going to help. Oh, uh, help everybody. Yeah. You, you it's gonna, help. What they say, yeah. all attention is good attention. Yeah. They say think it's yeah. bad every time that they say. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, bad publicity, right. No, there's the no such made, thing as bad they, publicity. If they, if they talk they, about it, they click on the internet, do you possibly make money off of it? Yeah, yeah, and, and and people are seeing that. You you're seeing a bunch of shows, you know, Willie D from uh, Ghetto Boys um, criticized this week because he had Cat on. He was the next one to have Cat on. Okay, and people are saying, you know, why you you know riding 
you know, you know how they say. Man, look, look, you know, <laughs> I think that's why you ride Shay Shay to right. get your, you know. Go ahead. And look at cat, was, cat, uh, cat show. I was on uh, Prime today, and I was looking through shows. Every time, every time I pass through a show, I keep seeing a, an old Cat Williams show going. What in the? Cat oh, everybody's everybody's yeah, taking the algorithm. Cat show, two thousand. Yeah. Where's I'm going? Well, yeah, the algorithm is definitely <laughs> hopping right. So now. why am I going? <laughs> to Cat Williams show to find today's show. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It, it's it, it, it elevated. Oh, it elevated everything. The whole Wanda uh, from V103 beef. <laughs> Is is uh, Wanda Frank Ski is, yeah. is coming up? Uh, yeah, I, heard I, I, I heard about it. But I wish I, I wish I can actually know what happened. Oh. What he said. It's not like, so it's not like she was. It's not like I, she was more in the wrong than he was. He said, "I asked her what we was going to do, and she said we we're going to do any of that." And soon he get on the radio, she go right at his jug. He go, "Wait a minute, now, right?" But I was. Well, it's it's on day. YouTube. It's on, I mean, and, and he, and said, he said, "Based yeah. on what she did, that, he said, said, oh, okay. he said, we said, oh, the gloves yeah. off now.'" Right. Yeah, he said the gloves yeah. off. <laughs> that cracking, that cracking got on <laughs> But I'm and, saying, I should know. Cat, we is the yeah. last person you want to get in the. Uh, oh. Stand up beef with. Yeah. <laughs> no, if you're you gonna know, talk to him, do like uh, do like David Chappelle did. Do it on the side, <laughs> behind closed doors. <laughs> right. Her career has still not recovered from mm-hmm. from that. Unfortunately, I mean, to the point now, I think I, I think you know she's got some health issues. Some things are going on then in her I mean, personal life. It, if it, Dave it, Chappelle yeah. talked, if Dave Chappelle talked to you on the side. Yeah. That's a good teller right there. They, there's some people you just don't go at. You just, you know, mm-hmm. hey. Yeah. Or at least how, have a conversation with. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. How your mama said, if you can't take the heat, get out that kitchen or don't go right. in that kitchen. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. So so last last thoughts, Talib. Uh, where, do, where do you think? I mean, now, now again, I'm going to go back to your first words, Talib. Mm-hmm. The positivity. It's King right. Weekend. Right. Wrap this. <laughs> 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 wrap, wrap all this. In, no, I'm going to leave for something. Okay, go ahead, man. Uh, wrap go wrap ahead, this in some positivity to leave. Go mm. ahead. Well, you know, the, here's the thing. Well, the way I look at it is that um, men deal with things in a manly way. And as long as there is. Not necessarily, I know there's not uh, going to be a respect thing because the comments are that I'm showing you that I don't really respect what you've done, but I respect you as a man. That's what I'm looking for. And that's what I'm hoping we can do. The arenas that we can keep this in is that, look, I don't really like what you did. So I can't say that I respect that, but I respect you. So let's have a conversation and let's get this out in the open and let's move forward. I think like um, that's what Kat was saying was that, look, if we if I take a fade on it, you can't expect me to, to still you can't come back 10 years later with the same stuff. Yeah, yeah. That, that negates the purpose of me taking the fade. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so, but again, look, guys, everybody knows that we got bigger issues to deal with. Oh, yeah. yeah you know, definitely. everybody yeah. knows that. So let's let's keep this in the realm that it's in it's conversations. We can laugh about it. We can talk about it. And, you know, everybody's always going to have an opinion on the opinions, <laughs> you yeah. know, which yeah. is why, you know, these comments and stuff like that are coming back like, oh, Willie D, you riding? Come on now, who doesn't yeah. want the hot guy on their show? Yeah, so true. You know, and if you're gonna come on, if I can get Cat Williams on, if I could get Cat Williams on the G podcast right now, bro, <laughs> you know what I mean? We, <laughs> you better believe hey, I'm like pulling out all stops. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Come on. But let's be honest, fellas. Let's keep this in the realm that it's supposed to be in, and let's concentrate on what really matters. You know, taking care of our peoples and making sure our folks are straight. Yeah, good point. Good point. Go to you, Vi. Well, Cat, I think more or less, I look at Cat as more as entertainment than anything else. Because he just told how he feel. And like my man said a few minutes ago, Cat said, I let it go. Right. But then they come back and get on national, on your podcast 
and say just the opposite. So now I can't let it go. Right. Yeah. And right. basically, That's the he, thing. one thing I said, cat, he did say something. I'm only saying stuff because they said it first. I'm just right. proving it. Now, as far as Stephen A, Stephen A went off the deep rail, right? As I can say. But my point with Stephen A is I have no problem with it as long as he just let it go. If you don't do it yeah. again, if you continue doing it, then it's going too far. Because when you go to start calling people names and you're going to, I really think you're going too far. Then you, you, if you say what you, you say what you're going to say and let it go. Cause he is a, he's a high powerful personality in the radio world right now. So I think he's, he don't, he, long as he don't, he say he's going to do and let it go and move on. Cause like you said, long as it stay in the entertainment world, it don't lead the entertainment world. You're not trying to destroy this man's career, even though he built his career on the stuff that we really don't appreciate. But that's his choice. That's a burden that he got to live with. Yeah. So let so him true. have it. You say it your piece and move on with it. So I'm, yeah. I'm good with everything right now. As long as it don't go no further than what it is right now. I'm good. Exactly. Exactly. Well, just, just, you know, FYI, I mean, Stephen A's contract is, is heading, uh, you know, he makes about 12 million a year well, and, uh, it's heading to a close or an end or re- renegotiations, I think in 2024 mm-hmm. at the end. So a lot of people feel, um, you know, he might be on the verge of going to work somewhere else, doing something maybe. else. Because you know, but he, um, that's a, you know, he, he, he a- probably should with ESPN, ABC. They not plan if he, you know, he could he could take this further than they want it to go, mm. and they may make a decision. But yeah. I think Stephen has, has prepared for them to let him go. He's not yeah. really worried about them. Yeah, I don't think he's worried. No, he fortunately, pro- right? Because at yeah. that, that, the way ESPN is operating now, they're not really honoring big contracts. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, and that's, that's what I'm saying right now. Uh, Fortunately, he's built up enough juice where mm-hmm. if he, even if he went on his own and didn't necessarily make twelve million, you know, he still he can still pretty much command a nice little salary doing right. some stuff independently. You know? and that's what I think that that's something that we all should be really looking towards. Mm-hmm. You know, especially because, yeah. in this new year. You, you know, look at Steve Nader where he lived his life. Sorry about that. Uh, mm-hmm. He's not living like he made twenty million a year. You don't see him going on. Uh, uh, if he is done, he's keeping the hush hush. You don't mm-hmm. see him traveling around the world and riding around in Lamborghinis and all that kind of stuff. He's not mm-hmm. out there spending all his money. Right. Yeah. So, nah, I, agree. I think he's okay. All right. What's your big takeaway? You got a big story for the week to leave? No, man. You know, I've been really trying to um, catch up on all the. Israel Gaza nonsense and uh, one thing I did find is uh, I was checking out something on Al Jazeera they said that it's not really a takeaway because I'm not going to be quoting the story but one thing that I found very interesting was the the fact that I did not know that there was a um, oil has basically been found off of the coast of Gaza Mm. Off of the Gaza Strip. And it's been, this is not something new. This has been in place for a while. But what I found out was that in, in the article it was saying that the 25 year lease that was granted to the Palestinians is over in 2024. Wow. Mm. So, <clears throat> you know, if, and that Israel has already issued some, uh, some permits, I guess, for lack of a better word, um, to a couple of companies for developing the oil reserves off of yeah. the, the coast of the Gaza. So, I got you. you know, this is this is we need we need to really be following the money on this whole thing. Always and the money. It's because, always about the money. You know, it's <laughs> somewhere. Even yeah. when they don't say it, it's about the money. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I'm going to say this, man, about that point, and I'm, I'm going to throw it to you, Vi. Um, the South Africa uh, <laughs> trial this week was was really interesting. I think people yeah. need to pay attention to what's going on with uh, South South Africa and and their declaration when it comes down to, uh, you know, that conflict. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, I'll, I'll grab a few articles, make sure we have them on the podcast page. But uh, appreciate that, man. Appreciate yeah. that. Hi, right, what you got? You got a big story for the I week? Big stories or old stories or all Trump. 
I mean, for anybody <laughs> lawyer, the judge can point blank ask you that you saying that he can hire the the seal team to kill a Democratic opponent and not yeah. be charged, and then you have the ball that you didn't say he didn't say, "Oh, you misinterpreted me." He said, "Yes, he can do that." I'm going, "Wow." What? Yeah, I think I think I think Trump's attorneys he said yes. are being attorneys, and they don't they don't understand you know. The, the, and, and hopefully y'all follow me on this, okay? You know, sometimes attorneys are just going to be attorneys. You know, it's a game, it's logic, right? Mm-hmm. And and you're dealing with a whole different set of how do you call it? What's on the line in this case is much bigger than your typical case where you're being an attorney okay where you can play that logical game that was just stupid yeah. you, know, everybody, you know what I'm saying there's a, there's a time to be a lawyer and there's a time to understand what you say will have far reaching impact Right, and, and I think it might it might be a, it might be fun playing you know mock trial with that but it ain't when you in real life and you say something like that, yeah. especially if you're a conspiracy theorist, you're like, oh, I told y'all, <laughs> <laughs> I told y'all they'd be taking people out, you know. So, so it's it's like it, there's a time to be an attorney and there's a time to shut up. But right. That's and, not, but that's not the yeah. worst part, Baco. Oh, I know. The worst it goes part on. is no Republican stood up and said and spoke out against it. They just that's been quiet. Why. But but they they've always been quiet. They, I, mean, I mean, even even now, when you look at uh, uh, the candidate, uh, I, I forgot. I don't even say his name. Starts with the R. The, uh, he's uh, Indian American. Right. What he basically, Swami. yep, he basically <laughs> is trying to get you know his opponent back on uh, the Colorado ballot. I, I mean, think he wrote just, an, a brief, an amicus brief this week. So, I think so yeah. Just show. But but see, that's that's the point. I mean, I think that's when it gets cult like to me. When yeah. everything's for show, that's when it that's when it crosses the line of of just being politics and being cult like. That's a cult. Yeah, I guess it's cult, right? Because I mean, you know you're dealing with cult members. You can you know you don't want to piss off the cult. I mean the things that he <laughs> said cult. and do. I'm looking at Republicans. Can't y'all see this guy is not with y'all? Y'all yeah. are trying to hide about the abortion. Y'all don't even want to talk about abortion. Trump said, yeah. "I am proud that I got it made illegal." Yeah. What are we gonna do, really? Republicans trying to shy away from that now. Because they yeah. seeing women dying from it, women leaving country from it. But Trump said he's proud of it. But see that that's why that again, I mean, that's where it crosses from traditional politics to cult. Well, ain't nothing traditional about this guy right here, nothing. No, there's nothing. And that's why that's <laughs> that why thing. that's why I say to twenty twenty four you know, we need to understand what we're up against and we need to understand, you know, what's at stake uh, again. I mean, when when you know what's it when you understand or, or you're in the community and you're following all these situations in the community. Again, I mentioned, uh, you know, the kids, the summer lunch is being taken away. I mean, that that may seem small to you, but for, you know, a family who's living under the or at or below the poverty line, that's a big deal when their yeah. kid can't get food. Uh, that basically they depend on, they've depended on, you know, when school was out and then all of a sudden these these governors say, no, we're not going to go that route. It, it, it has, I mean, Georgia being one of the states, Mississippi, be, I mean, most of these states are states that are predictable. Right. Uh, you know, it has impact. So I'm, I'm going to leave it at that. Appreciate you, Vi. Oh, I'm going to keep it light on the light side uh, as, we, as we leave, man. You know, I got to do my sports stuff, y'all. I just got to mention all these firings. Thank you. Thank you, Arthur Blank. You were listening. <laughs> you need to continue somebody said, Yeah, somebody said they, that Arthur Blank was listening to the podcast last week. You need, I, to, you need you know, to continue listening to you. Because <laughs> I, I am telling you. But I will say this one thing, you know, with Belichick, uh, what's his no. name in Seattle? No. Um, what was his name in Seattle? Uh, the, the coach, uh, Pete Carroll. Pete Carroll, that's him. Pete Carroll. Yeah. No. Uh, Saban stepping down. No. I mean, this is a significant. Uh, what do you call it? Changing of the guard. Yeah. One of the biggest changing of the guards and coaches I've ever seen in, in, in watching sports. I, I've not seen this many coaches, legendary coaches step down at one time. 
Just say no to Belichick. That's all I got to say. I say the same say, thing. Say no. Say no. <laughs> say no. Say no. Please. <laughs> say no. Say, Mr. Blank, if you're listening, please say no. Say I, no. Real, a, a, a real, but, but you know what? I'm going to say this as far as the coaches. This is a good opportunity for black coaches right now. One black coach, Gerard, um, has already accepted the New England position. So I'm going to give it up to him. He's already in place. <laughs> Um, I think there's a strong possibility uh, for Eric Bieniemy to go into place uh, in Washington. Okay. You think so? Agree or disagree? I think so because I, I think, think so. why. But let me let me say this: Why else would he leave the Chiefs for a lateral move to come to a situation where he doesn't get upped? Because the new owners bought him in. Uh, because, I, was, I can tell you why. I, I, because he what? never he never got credit in Kansas City. They kept giving it to the head coach. He figured but I, but if, if I he will go, tell you if you go to Washington, yeah. he would get he would at least get some credibility. But I will tell you, the Chiefs have been miserable right. offensively since he's since been gone. He's left. So so, so that's he had one to leave other, to get credibility. The other point, it would not make sense to me at all. Why would you go lateral? To a situation where you wouldn't be up or an opportunity, I think it's going to happen. So that I'm going to leave it at that, and we'll see. Because I would, I would only leave if they said to me, because what's his name, right. the coach who was fired, had was already on the hot seat when they bought him. He didn't speak so Hollywood. He didn't speak Hollywood. Very bit of me. No, and that's why I think that's why I think the owners will eventually bring him up. We'll see. I hope we'll they see. do. But I just don't see because I think they want to start over. I think they want a clean slate, and they keep him there. That's that's not a clean slate. But I think the new owners brought him in. I think he's part of the new regime. And we'll see. I hope you're right. And I hope he gets it because I, I, because I think I, we're going to see more black coaches. We're going to see a lot I of black coaches. I came to the Falcons, to be honest with you. Okay. I, I, you know, that's going to be an interesting situation. Don't see it, though. I don't think, my, yeah. I don't think Arthur, ready go, Arthur ready come to the dark side yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he got a black GM who's not doing anything. But anyway. <laughs> hey, you have a black GM and a black head coach. Yeah, I don't know if you're ready to go we'll there yet. We'll see. Okay. We'll see. Hey, real quick, Vi, I want to get your thoughts. Don't give me don't give me commentary. And you can jump in if you want to, Tweet. <laughs> All right. Don't give me commentary, Vi. Because we gotta go. Real quick. Okay, go ahead. Wild card weekend as we tape. And when this airs, uh the Saturday will already be gone, but we'll have the Sunday. But I'm gonna go ahead and get your Saturday picks anyway. Browns and Texans. Who you got? Texas. Browns. Okay. Uh I got I got Browns. On this one, uh, Dolphins and Chiefs. 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 Yeah, I go with Chiefs on this. I, I just don't think Miami <laughs> can win when they need to. No. Green Bay and Cowboys. Uh, Cowboys. I think the Cowgirls will take it, but I'm really pulling <laughs> for it. <laughs> isn't it isn't, don't Green Bay got to travel to Dallas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a home game, yeah. but that, and Dallas is yeah. pretty much undefeated at home. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's no rest at Dallas. Yeah. That's what I said, cowgirls. Yeah, I say I say Dallas. <laughs> Rams and Lions. Uh, that's a that's a tough one right there, but I'm gonna go with the uh I'm gonna go with the upset. Rams. I wanna see the Lions. I'm ready I'm ready to see the Lions take it all away, man. They ain't, they ain't, said, uh, they ain't been hit on that since Barry that's Sanders. That's why I said that. Uh, yeah, I agree. I I believe the Lions should win, but I would not be surprised if the Rams upset them. Yeah. Yeah. This would have been easy a few weeks ago. Eagles and Bucks. Eagles. Eagles. It's the Eagles. Bucks are playing at home. Bucks take okay. off. Bucks offense suck. Yeah, agreed. I got with Eagles. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's go with nine points. AB Carolina, what? Nine to what? Carolina. Yeah, it's, hard. it's horrible. <laughs> Baker Mayfield. Yeah. <laughs> they suck. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, we love your thoughts, y'all. Go to castropolis.net, choose the people poll, leave a voice message. Uh, you know, we'll play it back if it's good. We appreciate you. Go to castropolis.net, hit the people poll, leave a voicemail. Appreciate y'all guys. Uh, and again, y'all give it up for the one and only Talib Shabazz in the building. Talib. By the country commentator, appreciate you, man. Slash Kirby Jr. Always, always. Hey, you know, man. <laughs> All right, y'all. We'll come back, take a break, then we'll come back with Tanya B and the T. Appreciate y'all, man. Hey, go dogs. <laughs> there you go.
Hey, I'm, I'm, there I'm, you go. I'm, I'm talking about the basketball team. The basketball Did I say team, more? The basketball team looks good, man. No, well, you know. The all right, team. Team. all right, bye. <laughs> Appreciate y'all, man. All right, buddy, later. Peace out. Peace out. More. This is the G Podcast after the break. time y'all sipping the tea with tanya b yes 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 it's time to sip some tea children it's your number one entertainment tgt chick i am tanya b you may know me from the bird wire i'm also the one up in the club with the fake id i have a lot of headlines i have more headlines tommy b than last week let me just get right to it first off we gotta say prayers up to football legend and good morning america host michael strahan and his family yesterday he and his 19 year old daughter isabella did a very revealing interview on television talking about her fight back from a cancerous brain tumor. Mm -mm -mm, That's all I can say. Pete Davidson now says he's embarrassed. He admitted that he was with Ariana Grande at Aretha Franklin's funeral back in 2016 and he was high on ketamine. Are we surprised? Nope. Hey, do you have you heard that hot mic interview uh, with Janet Jackson telling Jermaine Dupree to get the fugazi out of her face after she had caught him cheating with the stripper? Aha! Around the way fillet. You know, Kevin Hart's movie, Lift, is now streaming on Netflix. His wife, Tori, is going, or ex-wife, actually, is going on tour with Cat Williams, and I hear she's funny. But now the wife's former assistant is flapping her gums, talking about how Kevin Hart cheats on everybody, past wife, current wife, that he has a gambling problem. But he's also been seen in some high-profile events, Tommy B, without his wedding ring. But it could just be because it uh, he had to get it resized, okay? <laughs> Jonathan Majors, you need to stop, stop, stop and go sit in the corner, fold the laundry, clean your house with Nick Cannon, Neo, Cardi B, Offset, R. Kelly and the rest of them. Do not compare yourself to Barack Obama and do not compare Megan Good to Coretta Scott King. That's why you need to be quiet until you get sentenced on February the 6th and uh, you keep losing gigs. He lost the Disney gig, the Marvel gig, and now he lost a gig to portray Dennis Rodman in the movie. Okay? <laughs> Black History Month is coming, y'all. <laughs> Nat Geo, who did a great job on Genius Aretha Franklin, is now continuing the Genius series with portrayals on Malcolm X and Martin Luther King, February 1st. (sighs) Angela Bassett finally got some of her flowers, this honorary Oscar, which she already earned from back in the 90s. Congratulations to her and to Kiki Palmer for winning a Creative Emmy for hosting the revival of the game show Password. Are you ready for Purple Rain coming to Broadway, Tommy B? I'm so sick of Prince and his never had anything relatives fighting over money. They got more than they've ever had. Let the people that have experience managing estates do their job. You just be quiet. I said it. Be quiet and get your check because now Prince's estate is worth over $150 million. Are you ready for this Michael Jackson biopic coming to the big screen April 18th, 2025 produced by the Jackson Estate and Antoine Fuqua. The Jackson Estate has approved using his music and Michael will be portrayed by his nephew Jafar Jackson who is the son of Jermaine. Tiana Taylor is now claiming that part of the reason why she is estranged or divorcing uh, Iman Shumpert is because of his drug use in front of their children. I don't need to say another word. He needs to go over there and sit in the corner too. Mm. Tiana, thank you for getting your children out of that toxic environment. Well, Nike Woods, Nike Woods, that's right. Tiger Woods and Nike have broken up after what, over 20 years? They have parted ways. I guess it's a divorce that we knew was destined to happen. Hmm. Five on it to Regina King, who will always be Brenda from 227, even though she was in a bunch of other movies. It doesn't matter. She is our forever Brenda from 227. But she is set to portray the groundbreaking New York State Congresswoman Shirley Chisholm in a movie coming to Netflix on March 22nd. Can you believe We Are The World Is Turning 40, Tommy B? Yep, there's not been another song like it since. Let's just call a thing a thing. But Quincy Jones told them all when they walked in the door, 
that's where they need to leave their egos some did some didn't but if you want to see the real deal behind the scenes go to netflix on the 29th of january also coming to streaming actress sanaa lathan who we love from love and basketball and brown sugar is going to produce in and star in a series about the fake 80s psychic miss cleo you remember call me now call me now Mm -mm -mm. that'll be interesting what else is interesting? Why Halle Bailey think we didn't know she was pregnant and having a baby? She and her D-list rapper, Baby Daddy DDG, now reveal they have a baby boy named Halo, and she's claiming that she did not want to ruin her image as a Disney actress. Girl, you better wake up, because we knew about that probably before Beyonce did. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just saying. There is a whole lot of heat building up behind Usher's 2024 Super Bowl halftime performance. You know what? Don't know who's playing in the game, but I'm okay with that. I'm going somewhere for some good food, some good fun, and just for the hang, okay? For me, it's all about the halftime show in my house. That's all I got. Ain't got no more. It's your girl, Tanya B. Don't forget, check us out each and every day on social media. Check us out on the YouTube channel. Like, subscribe, and share. Please, 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 and don't forget, the bird wire is still here. Castropolis.net on demand, however you want it. All right, Tommy B., back to you. Big thanks to Syracuse Mike, Tanya B, Vi Talib, author and political analyst Harold Michael Harvey. Man, check out his Young Thug trial updates. Go to haroldmichaelharvey.com. And don't forget, y'all, you can go to our social media bios and all our social media. The links are there as well as go to castropolis.net. Share us with friends. Don't cost you nothing. The 200th long sleeve tea is still available. Proceeds support the podcast. Subscribe. Turn on your notifications, y'all. Don't forget. And with that, episode 208 is in the can. Have a great week. Peace and power to the people. You've been listening to This is the G Podcast. And This is the G Podcast is a production of the Castropolis Podcast Network. Thanks for listening.